Hitler. In this episode of Carpe Diem. From identity theft to online scams, frauds affect us all, but especially older Canadians. What can you do to safeguard yourself? Carpe Diem. Seizing the day for Canadians as we age. Welcome. Elder mistreatment is a pervasive and growing problem. Frauds and scams are a form of abuse. We'll be discussing this major issue for CARP on this show. But first, videographer Leah Bolton went to meet this week's Zippy Zoomer. My dad was a C4 in World War II, and we're standing in front of the uh, General Hofmeister building, which is now the headquarters of the Army in British Columbia. We are here with our latest and greatest Zippy Zoomer. This is Rod. He's 72 years old, and he's an honorary colonel of the regiment. Of the Seaforth Highlanders of Canada, and I'm also the uh, director of the Seaforth Highlanders Museum and Archives. Let's go take a tour. Great. I went out and was successful in getting a grant from the Department of History and Heritage for uh, $50,000, which I used to hire a consultant to come in and tell us how maybe we should develop a museum. In uh, 2013, uh, I was part of a 10-person group that traced the route of the Seaforths and the other Canadian regiments that fought in Operation Husky in 1943. We walked from Catania all the way north uh, through to the end of the battle, and uh, it was hot. It was the middle of July. Temperatures were in the mid-40s. We would start walking very early in the morning to avoid the heat, and we walked right up almost to the base of Mount Etna. So you must be in pretty good shape? Yeah, uh, most of us trained for that walk. Wow, that, yeah, that's definitely a lot of walking. You also uh, do some archiving and things here? Our archivist and assistant curator try and keep me away from messing things up as much as possible. Morning, Megan. Rod, clean up your room here. Ab absolutely. <laughs> but it's a slow process because we have to record everything and photograph it before it gets into our inventory. Okay. Yep, this has got the medals in it. We do a lot of archiving and identifying of artifacts. It's going to put the map in its folder. That's where it'll live until it's needed for research. Put it in there and let it rest for a couple weeks. In the shelf with other books of the same ilk. Oh, oh, geez. <laughs> Looks like we need some organization here with these archives. In the meantime, if you have a Zoomer to nominate, don't forget to nominate them at zippyzoomer at carp.ca. Where does this go, Rod? Right in the cupboard behind you. Okay, we got a good start here. Rod is doing amazing work to honor our veterans. It's amazing how many seniors get to retirement and they don't know what they want to do. He clearly has a mission. And you know, having been to Sicily, I know how hilly it is and it can be darn hot. So that was quite a trek. Really wonderful to see that being commemorated. Incredible work that he's doing just maintaining our history like that. I mean, that's an important job that you know, goes without saying, good job on him. Yeah, and you know all about service, Dustin. Oh, somewhat, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. We're going to take a short break and after that we'll discuss the topic at hand and watch how you feel about frauds and scams. Up next on Carpe Diem. Look, somebody wants to take their wallet, guess what? All their information is right there and they're gonna try those pins first. And I have all my cards in my wallet. Seizing the day for Canadians as we age. In 2017, Canadians lost over $85 million to fraudsters. 
up from 82 million in 2016. Our panel today will identify some common scams and teach you how to protect yourself. Wanda, this is a very important issue for CARP, isn't it? It, it so is. And when we think of frauds and scams, we often think about the financial hit. And not to underestimate that, that's significant. People are struggling in their retirements. But what's even worse is that people become often depressed. They feel very ashamed of having been involved in a fraud or scam. Their health can suffer. We've even heard of people ending their lives because of what's happened. So really critical. As we get older, we lose a little bit of capacity and focus and things that were important to us once uh, uh, lose a bit of attention and attraction over time. So ask your folks, what are they doing? You know, what's new in their financial world, so to speak? But then there's the other side that sometimes their family is at fault. Absolutely. So, you know, we have elder abuse where uh, it happens in a vacuum, more or less, for these people. You know, you've got uh, some trusted member of your family, a son, a granddaughter, a, a nephew that's uh, you know, ripping you off for your life savings. Who do you go to when you can't trust your family? We've got uh, some financial institutions that are especially concerned about this issue. And recently, one bank actually held a seminar to educate their clients. Watch this. So beware of dangerous downloads to see pictures quite often very enticing to want to go and click on those things to hear music or to play games you could be downloading a virus. I've seen all different kinds of scams um, perpetuated on everyone from every different socioeconomic level. So it isn't just people with a lot of money, it's being perpetrated on everyone at all levels. And there are things that people can do to protect themselves. They're gonna ask you to pay out a fee or something and they'll, they'll give you a cut out of it at the end. There is no cut at the end. You just end up giving them money. So my advice to you would be to make sure that each card, and I know it's hard to remember all the different pins, but if you keep them, write them down somewhere where you're going to keep it safe and have a different pin for every card. And what happens if you have multiple cards in your purse? If they're able to figure out what that pin is on the first card, they're going to use every other card that's in that wallet. To, and, and so that's why if you make them different, they may have got your wallet, but they're going to have one card they're going to access, not all of them. And that, that's the reason you want to make sure that they're different. Where I worked around the corner, there was a gas station. And a bunch of people all of a sudden had their cards compromised. And it was a police track all the way back to this gas, one gas station where everybody got gas. Some seniors will carry their little cards with their address, phone number, birth date, SIN number, because they can't remember any of that stuff. So they carry it all laminated and nicely in their wallet. Well, if somebody wants to take their wallet, guess what? All their information is right there, and they're going to try those pins first. And I have all my cards in my wallet. I'm very aware of fraud. Very aware. And that's why I did so many of these seminars, had people come in, so to, and especially in the senior places like uh, and this was an adult complex, and right here today, 90% of these people probably had phone calls. And, uh, you just never know when it's going to happen to you. No, and and uh, it's a little funny, I was going to mention the PIN numbers. We can't have too many different PIN numbers because we won't remember them. Jim, financial fraud, what do you suggest to your clients, just basics? Well, I think... Uh, Everything from record keeping to how do you destroy records, uh, what type of decisions are you making. You know, I think trust your feelings as well. If, if you feel you've been scammed or some way, shape or form, trust yourself a little bit. Talk to somebody. You know, the idea of keeping that embarrassing uh, element to yourself, uh, I think, perpetuates these crimes. So we really want to encourage folks to consider talking to somebody if, if they suspect something is not right. And you do a lot of community outreach on this subject too, don't you, Dustin? Absolutely. You know, we try to, uh, you know, I guess, inform and educate as many people as we can. Uh, when we talk about these situations, when we discuss it with our neighbors, with our sons, our daughters, our grandparents, we're more insulated against uh, you know, the effects of these scammers. I know so many members and I've heard anecdotal stories of individuals who have you know, not only lost money, but then this, you know, lost their sense of self. And, and I think it's important for people to realize that frauds and scams target people of all ages. Now, older Canadians often are, are more trusting. I think younger Canadians have seen a lot of videos of what can happen that maybe older Canadians have missed out on. But it's really critical to know that you're not alone, that other people are being also taken in by these very clever and canny fraudsters um, so so don't um, don't take it personally right and you were saying that that the the scammers 
create scans for the older, but also for the younger, and who are all susceptible. Absolutely right. You know, you might see the older.